you've gotten the message, you should be writing blogs, you understand how it's gonna help SEO traffic from Google find you and help you get more traffic on your website and all the good stuff that goes with that sales and everything like that. But what do you write about? We're gonna go over right now, what are the 10 blog posts types that you can write to wow your audience. So blog post type number one, the how to post. It's pretty obvious. It's pretty self-explanatory. You write a post describing how to do something. So you know how to do things better than your audience. Otherwise they wouldn't come to you. Otherwise they wouldn't want you to do things for them and buy things from you, right? Um, you simply describe to them exactly how you go about doing something. Things to keep in mind are obviously keep this process very simple, very actionable. Don't give your audience something that they couldn't actually do. If they need some other resource to go about um, completing that how to action sort of steps that you're giving them, then put the link in there. Say, you know, check out Rocket Expansion to learn how to do the SEO step or check out whatever, whatever your favorite resource is that's helped you a lot and um, direct them there so they can actually complete the task and they can feel, wow, I really got helped out by this how-to blog post. So that's the first one, the how-to post. The next one, which is probably, I think, the most useful and the most popular that everybody uses all over the place, just because it works so damn well, is the list post. You see it all the time. 10 ways to, you know, I mean, this, this post right here is a list post, right? 10 types of blog posts to wow your audience. Um, you could almost say it's a how-to post too, because it kind of says how you can wow your audience, but it's basically a list post. You also get combinations of list posts and how-to post, to posts. So it's like um, 10 ways to make lemonade <laughs> or 10 ways to walk your dog backwards <laughs> or whatever you want to you want to um, write about. But uh, the essential thing about a list post the audience, your, your reader knows exactly how many items they're in for. So they go, okay, this read is 10 long or this read is 15 long. They know they're going to get um, 15 watch thingamajingamajings and they're happy with that. And also if you want to really just sort of outdo everybody else, you can see, oh, well, everybody else only got 10 or they got 12, and, but I'm going to do 67. <laughs> and that kind of makes you look a little bit better. So people go, okay, well, maybe I should rather read the 67. It's just got more value in it. So that's the next one, the list posts. I de definitely recommend you write a lot of list posts. The next one, which is a type of list post, is called the expert roundup. <laughs> so the expert roundup is when you actually go around the web, or even better, you actually network and find out a bunch of net, uh, experts in your niche, and you ask them for quotes, you ask them for what they would do um, on the subject of your blog post. So you know, maybe it's um, 12 author marketing experts share their advice to help new authors get traction online. So now you go and you find all these author marketing experts, you actually reach out to them and you get a little quote from them and you say, we'd love to feature some of your valuable knowledge on our blog. And of course what happens, you know, obviously some of them will say yes, some of them will ignore you as always happens if you just reaching out to a whole bunch of people, that's fine. Some of them will, will be pretty keen. They're being featured as an expert on another person's online platform. Makes them look good, why would they say no? So then you get your 12, you can maybe put your own little commentary on each one and say why it's good, or you know, write the post to tie them together. But it's relatively easy to create because you, apart from just getting hold of the people, which can be a little bit of a thing sometimes, but um, once you've got all the quotes, and once you put them together, it's just basically compiling what a bunch of people have already said. You can link to their, to their blogs or relevant information on their sites. But the expert roundup is really awesome because it helps you get traffic. Because once you post it, you can then reach out to all the experts that contributed and say, hey, um, I've actually just featured you in this post, as you know, I've written about you and uh, I featured your, your expert tip here. I'd love if you could share it or let your audience know or even link back to it and a good, a good bunch of time that those experts and the people you featured will go, okay, sure, sounds great. And they'll, they'll give you some of their traffic. So that's number three, the expert roundup. Number next is the interview post. So we just featured one of these on our website. Um, 
I was featured in a summit, the Children's Book Mastery Summit, um, and Karen very nicely uh, shared the interview um, that was between her and I on, I think it was, uh, how to get more traffic to your author website. So if you look on our, our blog post, you'll see that that's the last post up, I think before this one. Um, it's, it's an interview post. She basically asks me questions, I give her answers, and it's nice, you get a kind of a dialogue feel. Um, if there's a video that goes with it, you can put the video there as well. And it's, you could break it down into headings, like that's quite a useful way. Um, each little bunch of interview information has got its own heading so people can kind of skip to the section that they're interested in. So that's the interview post. Next one is the what is post. <laughs> this is very simply, you are wanting to maybe um, help your audience understand about a certain type of thing and you're just gonna say well, what is that thing? Explain it. I mean, what is a marketing funnel could be a great post um, What is SEO? <laughs> I mean th These things sound stupid and simple, but uh, They really provide a lot of value when you define something in a in a way that helps people really understand what that thing is better can be an excellent post and if you want to take your audience into a deeper understanding of something that you go over a lot, I would very much suggest you write a few what is posts. The next one is the, which is number six. <laughs> the next one is the why post. Now this actually could have a huge amount of variations, but basically you're saying, why does blah -de blah or, or you can ask a question like this, like does every business need X? That's kind of like a why post. You're saying, well, why a business needs it or why a business doesn't need it. You could, the, a kind of variation of the why post is why not? You could say why you don't need blah. It's kind of a, the reasoning, it's, it's basically a, the reasoning behind post and you're going to explain the, the reasoning behind something. And you can take completely one angle, another angle. You can kind of play two angles against each other. Like um, why you need a successful or why you need, um, let's say, why you need a f less pages in your menu, uh, but more pages on your website. So it's kind of like you could play a, a big thing off with a small thing. I'm not saying that is the truth or whatever, I'm just giving you an example. Great, so that's the why post. And uh, number seven is the trending topic post. This is pretty self-explanatory. But I mean, if you were, I saw Dr. Berg do a video post about the coronavirus. So the coronavirus is a trending topic right now in February 2020. And he went all over the coronavirus, what a coronavirus is. I was pretty interested to hear that there are many types of coronavirus. They just happen to call this coronavirus the coronavirus, but actually there's many types of coronavirus and some of them aren't dangerous at all. Anyway, I find that quite interesting. Trending topic. He's, he's a health expert. He's like, okay, I'm gonna talk about the coronavirus because it's a trending topic. And no doubt people, anybody who's kind of interested in Dr. Berg or interested in health, and they wanna know about the coronavirus, they feel, they feel like he's an expert. They go, okay, I'm gonna learn about the coronavirus from Dr. Berg. There you go, trending topic. Grab onto that, you immediately get that now, now interest that jumps on board and learns about your, learns more from you like that. The next one is the review post. So if you want to, I mean, if you know your audience and you want to kind of show them that you know about their world, uh, obviously you kind of interested in a lot of the same things they are, you can go and say, well, you know, maybe uh, you want to let them know about a new book you've just read and you've maybe one of the first to read this book, it's just been released and you really got through it fast. Cool. You can write a review of what you feel about uh, that book. You can say, you know, no spoilers or spoiler alert if you've read it, or you can do that whole kind of thing. You could review products. You can review processes that are available. You can do all sorts of reviews, but a review gives your audience that rare behind the scenes look so they don't have to commit to really buying or subscribing or whatever. And a lot of people will come and just check you out just to see what your review is. So that is number eight, the re the review post. Number nine is the case study post. You can, a case study is just simply you go through 
a, an example of how you have completed a task or completed a project, delivered it, and it's kind of, you could say it's a success story or maybe it does not even a success story. Maybe what you've learned through um, a quite a difficult project that you had that maybe wasn't even a success, but it still gives valuable information because you maybe you didn't really win the job, but you did win the lesson, if you follow what I'm saying. Um, something like that, right? So that's a kind of case study, it can almost be a bit of a story. You can also take other people's case studies. You can say, um, I don't know, why the building of McDonald's as a business is a, you know, um, an exercise in, I don't know what, real estate, smart real estate choosing or something like that, right? Just making that up as I go along. So a case study could be about somebody else's story and that also could be very valuable to your readers and then gives you the opportunity to back it up with other information that you find and research. So can be a great one as well. Uh, your own case studies I find are, are very make very nice blog posts because they also help you kind of sell what you can do. You can show the results you produced for your, for, for your previous clients and that really helps take people that are maybe thinking of giving you a chance and really giving them a behind the scenes look so they can go, oh, okay, cool. Well, if they did that for those guys, maybe you can also do that for me. So I highly recommend the case study as a, as a type of post. And number 10, this could be almost any one of these posts, but I think it's a very important one to include, the guest post. So <laughs> guest posting is an important part of your blogging strategy. You actually aren't going to have the guest post on your own blog. You're going to have it on somebody else's blog. You're going to reach out um, through any channel possible. Sometimes it's in person, sometimes it's on a call. You can find somebody on LinkedIn. You can network through email, however which way. But you basically reach out to another blog and find the right person and you say, hey, I would love to write a post on your blog. And in that post, you make sure you link back to the posts on your blog that you want people to read more about and you write an excellent post for their blog, they're happy, they get free content, and you're happy you get traffic coming from their blog through that link, and that link from their blog also helps the SEO on your website, because pretty much the most important factor that helps um, blogs rank for certain keywords is the amount of links and the, the strength um, of the links that come from other websites to your websites and to those blog posts on your website. Then that's the guest post. The other side of the guest post is of course, let other people guest post on your own blog. And it's the benefit of course is that you get free content. I've just had two guest posts on our blog and um, it's great, you know, they give you the content. You maybe just put a featured image there for the top or whatever. You can do a tiny bit of editing if you want or you can just put it up as it is. There you go, presto, new content. So that is the 10 types of blog posts that you can write to wow your audience. Tell me about which one you are gonna write about next.